What is up, heroes? It's Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play 999 Blind. In the last episode, we got to know Santa and Lotus a bit better as we talked about the morphogenetic field. And in this episode, we're going to hopefully be using this Mars key that we unlock to, uh, to unlock a new door and, I don't know, progress a bit, I guess. Let's head on over here. Yes, it unlocked. Good job, Junpei. Good, now we can get going. Come on, what are you guys sitting around for? Let's get out of here. You are too slow. <laughs> um, alright, well I guess we'll head on. Oh, come on, Junpei-kun, let's go. Alright, let's go. Here we go into the next room and potentially the next puzzle, question mark? You found it. Hey. So probably going to be treated with a little bit more of a story segment here. These being green make me think that they're actually functioning too. Another hallway. Come on, open. I feel like of all people, Santa, you're probably skinny enough to crawl through there or something. <laughs> it's not going to open because you rattled it, you know. <clears throat> Darn it. Look over here. Elevators and the buttons. Darn. <laughs> of course they don't work. I, I was optimistic that they'd work because they were green, but... The power must be out here, too. Just like by the staircase. <laughs> that leaves this door. They do really feel like mice in a labyrinth, where... Not even necessarily in a labyrinth where they have multiple options that become dead ends. Like, they just don't even have that many routes they can really branch out into. Well, looks like we don't have any choice. Yeah. Sure does. Well then, let's open it. Here we go. Alright, here I go. I do feel like, though, each puzzle is going to start off with one of those red things, so I, I think they'll at least have some priming, right? Some idea they're going to enter a puzzle before they actually do. Unless the game is different, you know, and they, uh... And they want to try and catch the, the players off, uh, or by surprise with that? I don't know. Oh, so it's a kitchen. What were you expecting? Isn't it obvious? <laughs> the exit. I was hoping this would be the way out of here. Well, that's optimistic. <laughs> you really think it'd be that easy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Still. If we can just get through this door, we should come out on the other side of that grate we saw earlier. Looks like it's not going to be the simplest task, though. <laughs> but don't we need a key for that? <sighs> Sorry, I guess that wasn't very constructive. <laughs> or very helpful. Here we go. Is it going to show me the layout? <laughs> Seek a way out. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look. Ah, uh, where are we? Hey! Huh? What's that? Huh? Oh, yeah, I guess I forgot to tell you. They're gonna be like, why, why are you holding on to this super important information? I found this a little while ago. It's a map of the B deck. Let me see that. I knew it. See, look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hold your horses. Yeah, what 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 did you figure out? I'm curious too. This is handy. See? We came in here. If we go out there, then we'll be on the other side of the grate. How about that? She's right. We can get out through here. Something interesting though is the grate seems to be on the map itself, which is interesting because I figured that the grate would be something that Zero added to the ship or modified the ship um, in such a way that the grate would be there for the purpose of this game. But it seems like from the moment of construction, such a grate or wall or something like that was planned to be there. There we go. Here, you can have it back. 
ああ、thanks ドアの右側にカードリーダーがついてますね There's a card reader on the right side of the door ってことは、この部屋のどこかにカードキーが Then that means the key card is somewhere in here, right? 多分、そういうことでしょうね That seems the most likely よし、そうとわかれば話は早い Alright, we know we need to do then 早速行動開始だ <laughs> Let's get moving. First off, I say we split up and look for clues. All right, thanks, Fred. <laughs> okay. Yep, here we go. Time to look for a way out again. All right. Let's give it a go. So, okay, it looks like there's, there's quite a bit to explore in here. <clears throat>、um, let's take a look at all these dishes. A voucher, it says. Appetizer 9, meat dish 10, soup A, C, seafood dish F. Alright,、um, so my first impression of this is we're gonna need this for some sort of code later on. It could be base 17 numbers, I guess, but those nine plates look pretty expensive. They're plates for appetizers. Remember, appetizers usually come on square plates. Okay, okay, well, excuse me, princess. Oh my goodness, it's in the game this time. I love saying that. That's one of my favorite jokes to make, in refer to make a reference to. Well, excuse me, princess.、Oh, I love it. Junpei. Add, add many points to Junpei's、uh, side of the board or whatever scoreboard there is. One, two, three, there's ten of them. If you flip those, these over, they look like hats. <laughs> the middle is super deep for a plate. They're soup plates. They're made that way so that the food doesn't sp or the soup doesn't spill. If we ever get out of here, you should treat yourself to a nice dinner out. Lotus is like, have you ever eaten at a nicer establishment? What makes you think a poor college student has the money to do something like that? Ain't that the truth? I think there are 15 of these plates. I'm assuming they're for seafood. How the heck can you tell that? They look just like any other plate from the 99 cent store. If you ever take a lady out to dinner, you're going to embarrass yourself. Oh, buddy. I feel sorry for June. <laughs> I love that everybody on this ship thus far is all about the ship between June and Junpei. What? 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 Why the heck are you bringing up June? The lady doth, prote doth protest too much, methinks. <laughs> you are not terribly subtle. That's really funny. So there were nine of these square ones, which are for the appetizers, ten for the soup, fifteen for the seafood, and there's a bunch of little wavy ridges on this plate. Those plates are for serving me.、Oh, you really are ignorant, aren't you? Come on, it's not like I need to know this crap. Jeez. Alright, but we're not told how many of them there are.、Um, there's a voucher at the end of the counter. This voucher doesn't match the number of plates on the table. It says appetizer nine, meat dish ten, soup A, seafood dish F. That's obviously going to be relevant, right? They mentioned that there were nine appetizers, there were ten of the soup plates, and there were fifteen of the seafood dish, and we didn't know how many meat dish there were, right? And the plates on the table are nine appetizer, wait, sixteen meat? Ah, gotcha. Ten food, or ten soup, seafood fifteen. Okay, maybe they're using hexadecimal here? I was thinking it would be base 17, because in base 16, F would be 16, right? Oh no, that would be 15. That's totally my bad. Maybe they're using hexadecimal here. And hexadecimal is.、Uh, it's a number system that goes 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 10, 11.、Um, where A, B, C, D, and F are 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. For those of you that don't know hexadecimal, our, our number system that you're familiar with is base 10 system, where the singles digit is 10 to the zero with, or multiples of 10 to the zero with power. The tens digit is multiples of 10 to the first power. The hundreds digit is multiples of 10 you know, to the second power. And you get your, your sum number by basically adding up all of those multiples of powers of 10. Hexadecimal, on the other hand, is where your singles digit is basically 16. To the zero with power, multiples of that. Your tens digit, except in base 16, would be multiples of 16 to the first power. But obviously, when you're trying to fit in one single digit, the number you know, 12 or 13, because that can work in something like base 16, you need to represent it as one character, which is why they have the letters A, B, C, D, E, F. 
You're familiar with base 10, right? <laughs> Let's see how they explore, explain it, I guess. That's the normal system of numbers. The base 10 equivalents for hexadecimal numbers would go like this. A equals 10, B equals 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, F is 15. And 10 equals 16. The 10 becomes 16 in base 10. I know it sounds strange, but you can think of it as just six letters added to the normal number system after nine. All right, we're, we're good on that, and so on. I think I get it. Okay, so, yeah, so this is definitely a hexadecimal we're working with here. Hexadecimal, I wonder if it's some kind of hint. Yeah, maybe. Jubei, do you remember what I told you about hexadecimal code? Yes, don't worry, we're good. All right then, here's a little quiz for you. What would nine plus F be in base 15? It'd be, what, 24? <laughs> That's right. Good job, you're a fast learner. I, I want to like add it to my item queue so I don't have to continually just remember what the different um, ones were. It was like 9 for appetizers, 10 for the meat dishes, A for seafood, and I think F for the last one, whichever one it was. But then there were 9 of these plates, etc. I'll, I'll come back when it's more apparent. But for the time being, there's clearly a lot going on with those plates. Wow, this pot looks like it's made out of silver. I bet drinking tea from this pot would be really yummy. Spending a day off with June, drinking tea. Could such a day ever happen for me? <laughs> Junpei kun? Oh, oh, nothing. Just, not just daydreaming about spending my life with you. What? We don't really need hot water, so we should be moving on. Aw. Um, it's a partition that splits the room. On the right side of the wall, it's one of those swinging doors. You see them a lot in between kitchens and dining areas and restaurants. Without this door, you'd need to run all the way around the partition to get to the other side. That'd really be a pain, huh? Well, I guess it's not really important, but still. I guess it's good to know. Um, wow, Jimmy, you can reach really high. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of like when every like 10-year-old guy or 10-year-old boy just like running through any doorway or standing around in any place. Like, how high in the ceiling can you touch? Or can you jump and touch the ceiling? Or can you like, I don't know, hit some arbitrarily high mark above whatever doorway arch you're passing under? <laughs> yeah, I can jump pretty high. Here we go. Okay, so there's the door we walked in. Um, can we head over there? It's a lot of notes. They've got a bunch of stuff written on them, but it doesn't see or doesn't look like a code or anything like that. Okay. I guess we'll keep moving around then. Oh, we got a lot behind us too. Lots to look into, guys. A sink. It's still got water in it. There are a couple of plates in there, but I don't think they're gonna help us much. Really? Okay. A whetstone. How how silly is it going to be that I'm not entirely sure what this is used for? <laughs> it's probably not a good thing. Um, Alright, well, maybe this table is for preparing food. There are plates everywhere. Okay, trash cans. Uh, there's nothing inside of it. <laughs> well, better than being full of rotten food, I suppose. Yeah, it definitely helps with the smell. How about these ones? Darn it, there's nothing in here. Hey, Santa, digging through the trash really suits you. <laughs> what the heck did you say? Listen, lady, I did you a favor. I knew you'd just piss and moan, so I did it for you. Oh my. I don't recall asking you to do anything. Uh, <laughs> I ought to throttle you. Excuse me? What? Does, does it feel colder in here? <laughs> That's funny. I'm liking Lotus a lot more. A lot more. Her, her sense of humor and her kind of wittiness are definitely character traits I appreciate. Oh, a countertop. There's a rolling pin and colander here. Nothing useful. How about this light, though? <laughs> They're lights, buddy. Nothing weird about that. <laughs> I find it so funny that you can almost always interact with the lights, but it's almost, almost always normal, and all the other characters like kind of throw you shade for even being interested in them. What do we have going on here? Alright, it's going. Do you think this is all part of Zero's plan? Probably. Kinda hard to believe there's a chef on board somewhere. Fair point. I wonder what this drawer is. Is it locked? See the metal grate on top of the grill? They make it like that so that the fat and juices can drip off of the meat while it cooks. Okay. Looks like the area under the plate opens up. No, you can't. I already checked. It's sealed shut. I think that's where the coal goes. Okay, um, then I think we're good there. Where else can we look? Ah, I see something that's going to involve a code. 
Um, what do we have going on here? This is probably what you're supposed to use to enter the password. Maybe if we put in the right number, it'll open the oven door. Okay. Um, something worth noting, I guess, is there are no, um, you know, alpha, alphabetical letters or alphanumeric words or whatever, alphabet characters, I guess. So we're probably going to have to convert some number in base 16 to its equivalent in base 10 and input that is what my intuition is telling me. All I've got here is a pot and frying pan. Oh, and a pressure cooker. Well, I guess we could use some of those as weapons. <laughs> I mean, I guess so, but what kind of an idiot are you? You're gonna run around holding that thing while you're looking for the dead? Hey man, it was just a joke. Why so, why so serious? Okay, anything else of relevance? There's a pot on top of the stove. If there's some ingredients around here, I could cook something up for us. Would be much appreciated. Lotus, you can actually cook? Who the heck do you think I am? You'd better believe I know how to boil hot water and put in my instant noodles. <laughs> and, and I can boil eggs too. <laughs> Talking some expert chef skills. There's some bottles of seasoning in here. Okay. Anything else of relevance? It's only a partition. There's nothing else worth noting here. The lights though? Oh, lights. It's nice to have something finally go our way. So I think... I think that covers the whole the whole area, right? Oh, we haven't looked in the back at that stuff, I guess. A countertop. We've got a rolling pin and a colon, another useful, in other words. Oh, we just haven't looked at it from this perspective. It's kind of far away, I can't really tell, but is that a, a ladle? I don't really think a ladle is going to be very useful. Okay, so it's, it's pretty clear that we're, that's the exit. There's a big old iron plate over the door. I don't think we can open it. Pretty clear that what we need to do is work with these plates. So let's see what we have. There are nine plates for appetizers. Nine is nine, even in a hexadecimal and decimal. Oh, so they're gonna convert it for us essentially. There are 10 soup plates. 10 is A in hexadecimal. Um, there are 15 seafood plates. It says F on the voucher. There are 16 meat plates. 16 is written as 10 in hexadecimal. That is nuts. I don't I don't really get what they're going for there, but um, I get this. Okay, what does it what does it say on the voucher? Huh? Do we have the voucher? No? Okay, maybe the voucher was then just some sort of like key item to trigger the conversation about hexadecimal. So which numbers which digit? Right? Like I, I maybe we just convert all of these to hexadecimal and add them up, and that's our number? Is all I can think of, but but it's pretty important which digit it is in the, the hexadecimal number, potentially. There are nine plates. So, oh wait, we can give it a go at least. I mean, nine and 10, it's gotta be, it's gotta be some meaning to it. So it's like nine, 10, and 15, and it says F, and then 16. I mean, I want to look at what the voucher said at first. It was, it was like nine appetizers, 10 something else, I think A, seafood and F, meat dishes. I think. Maybe there's some other clue that I'm missing to, as far as like how to arrange these numbers, right? Because, I mean, from like right to left, I guess you consider the plates on the far right, the singles digit, then the second to that, the, I mean, the, to the 16 to the first power, and then 16 squared, 16 cubed, etc. But that would be, that would be a huge number, like a huge number. So, so I don't know. <laughs> um, Nothing really suspicious about that. Silver pot. Can I really not read the note again? This looks like a serving table. I would imagine food is put here after it's prepared so that the waiters and waitresses can take it out to the customers, but something doesn't seem right here. Why are there so many plates? All right, well, I mean, nine appetizers, 
10 soup plates, which is A, and then there are 15 seafood plates, which is F on the voucher, and then 16 meat plates, which is 10. Um, I mean, 16 base 16 is like, is just 10, I get. It's like, uh, <laughs> what, what do they want me to do with these numbers though? Let's see how many inputs there are here. Hey Junpei, why don't you try entering the numbers we found on the voucher earlier? The one that said appetizer 9, meat dish 10, soup A. Oh, so this is how we can recheck what the voucher said. Appetizer 9, meat dish 10, soup A, seafood dish F. So it'd be like 9, and then 10, and then, well, 10 again, I guess. And then, what would be 16? Yes. Convert the 10, A, and F to base 10. So... If we're converting everything back to base 10, 1, 0 would be 16, but wouldn't A would just be the number 10, and then F would be the number 15. Well, it's worth a shot. No dice. Looks like that's too many numbers. Huh? How many... How many slots do we have? Looks like the number on the voucher isn't the actual passcode. I don't even, I don't even have like the opportunity. <laughs> An iron oven. Looks pretty heavy duty. It's probably industrial quality. I bet you could cook anything with this. Anyway, let's have a look inside. <laughs> Darn, I knew it. I mean, we just tried to enter a passcode that's, you know, part of a lock on this oven. It's locked. So... So the question then is, where is this code relevant, right? Hmm. They won't even let me try the inputs. I really want to try it again, but they won't even let me try. It looks like the number on the voucher isn't the actual passcode. Are they going to make me go back to interact with the, the plates? There are nine plates for appetizers. 10 soup plates, um, 15 of these seafood plates. It's, I, also, I really shouldn't be saying 10, I should really just say 1, 0. <laughs> it says F, and then 16 meat plates is written as 1, 0 in hexadecimal. That is nuts. So is this maybe just serving as a mechanism to explain hexadecimal and we need to actually find the the what we're supposed to interpret as hexadecimal so, somewhere else maybe? A couple plates in the water. Can I interact with them? No? Okay. Um, we can head over here. It's a grill. There's some coals down here. They're bright red. Okay. Grill ready to grill. Can I... It's stuck. Um, and this area is sealed. Can we... Let's search this. A whetstone? What are you planning to do with that? Oh crap, don't tell me you're gonna try and smash open the card reader. Are you an idiot? If you do that, then we'll never get out of here. Oh. Yeah, I, I guess that would be bad, huh? <laughs> this one is only gonna be useful if we need to sharpen something. We haven't even found, we haven't even picked up something we could sharpen yet. What would we want to sharpen? Um, a rolling pin and colander, nothing useful. I've already looked in the trash cans, right? Is there anything else I can think of? Rolling pin. Bucket, or big bucket made of tin, there's nothing inside. Um, I mean, we can keep looking around, I guess. <clears throat> but I'm not exactly, it's not like I can interact with those pans. Is there an aspect of the room I'm missing or something? Is there a pan we could sharpen? A utensil we could sharpen to act as a lockpick, maybe? A ladle? <laughs> I don't know, just an ordinary ladle, no reason to hang on to it. Um, is there something under the table? 
Do I need to break a plate? Can I head over here? Oh, I can. What's this? It's a bolt. And it's really rusty. Will this even open? We won't know until we try. Let's give it a shot. Alright, let's see if you're gonna come out. Darn. No dice. Do I need to sharpen it or attempt to like wear it down a little bit with the whetstone? A rusted bolt. This door won't open until we can do something about this bolt. Maybe if we had some kind of lubricant. I mean, that's a fair point, but well, I can move the doorknob and I'll bet all we need to do is get this bolt off. So what can we use as a, as a lubricant from in here? All I can think of is potentially this hot water, or if we were to open the drawer somehow, we could use the, the fat and grease from in there, right? The drawer seems to be stuck. It won't open. What's keeping it stuck, though? Hmm. Is there any leftover food we could put on here to get some grease, maybe? I don't know. Hmm. I mean, yeah, all I can think of then is potentially the, the water to try and use as a lubricant, right? There's a silver pot here. Can I not fill it with water or anything? No? I guess not. Um, a door, there's a bolt keeping us from opening it. Is there anything else in this general region I can go to? Or no? What's over here? It's a tank with a pipe coming out of it. Nothing really that special about it. What's this door? Hey, Santa. Could you open that door, please? What the heck? There's no way I could open that thing. Guess you're getting to that age where your eyes start to go, huh? <laughs> you better watch your mouth, boy, or someone won't live long enough to see that door opened. That's really funny. This has got the two of them on edge. We gotta get out of here, and fast. So... So, from my understanding, we're gonna need to go through this door. We need a lubricant for this. We probably need the fat and oil or oil and grease or whatever from that thing. But we need some way to open that. And all we have is a whetstone. <laughs> I'd imagine we can sharpen something, but I can't even find anything else to interact with that we could potentially sharpen. Can we talk about how hype this music is? I'm absolutely loving it. I think, as might be expected, I might just play around with this a little bit and not bore you guys as I think through things. Maybe, like, it's something as specific as the nail on the noteboard, right? Like, something like that, maybe? I don't know. Oh my goodness, I didn't even realize... <laughs> I didn't even realize we could go in here. I thought this was the door we came in, not... That's probably why they have a map here, and uh, it's worth noting. Okay, well, here we are in the pantry, guys. Let's inspect what's going on here. This shelf has a white cloth on it. Yes, it does, and we can take it away. Is it an item we technically have or no? We just, okay, we got rid of it. Cool, what's going on back here? There's so much stuff in here. A whole lot of cans. This is probably a pantry. Can we take one of the cans? Wooden box on the second row, though. Can we, can we inspect it? Ooh, we got ourselves a knife. A rusty knife. Hope you guys have your tetanus vaccines. <laughs> I don't think we'll be able to use it while it's like this. Good thing we have a whetstone. It's futile. Futility? Futile? You know, a waste, useless, pointless. Oh. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Um, any particular reason you wanted to bring that up? Oh, no, no reason, really. I was just thinking about futility. No, don't tell me she's already fallen into despair about the situation. Huh? Why are you thinking about futility? Well, it has something to do with the Titanic. Titanic? The Titanic? Yep. Oh my goodness, June! <laughs> June, don't do this to me again! I'm gonna have to sit through some conversation about an Egyptian curse again. Regardless, have you ever heard the story that the sinking of the Titanic was predicted? 
No, I haven't. Do do tell, June. Do tell. No, I haven't. What is it? In 1892, 14 years before the Titanic sank, a novel was published. It was called Futility. It was written by an American novelist named Morgan Robertson. The story was about a big cruise ship colliding with an iceberg and sinking. You know what? Guys, I... I should write a story about a country that ends up failing economically and leads to some sort of internal strife and civil war. I can guarantee you <laughs> that within the next couple hundred years, there will be some niche population that will look back at me as some sort of psychic that could predetermine the, or see the predetermined future as it's applied to whatever specific situation it comes up. Of course, if that was the only similarity, there wouldn't be any reason to mention it. <laughs> it wasn't though, as her like whole expression gets a little bit more intense. The name of the ship, its nationality, course, departure time. Size, displacement, maximum speed, number of passengers and crew, the number of lifeboats. Even the location of the accident itself, and the cause and the location of the damage. Everything matches the Titanic almost exactly. It was almost as if he'd seen the whole thing happen. But this book was written 14 years before the Titanic sank. But that's not all. It wasn't just futility that predicted the sinking of the Titanic. There were two other, similar stories written by a man named William Thomas Steed. Both of them before the accident. One in 1886 and one in 1892. Stead, I think is how it's supposed to be pronounced, wrote two stories that had striking similarities to the Titanic disaster. In one, two ships collided and many of the passengers died because there weren't enough lifeboats. In the other, a ship collided with an iceberg and sank. Those are so generic, right? Like, those are fears of any sort of ship, right? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I'll give you that it seems a little weird, but... I'm pretty sure it wasn't too uncommon for ships to hit icebergs back in the day, or even other ships. <laughs> right, I knew you'd say that. Hmm? But... What if Stead had some sort of special powers? <laughs> what? To be more specific, what if he had the ability to do automatic writing? What? Uh, automatic writing? Wait, are you... Are you talking about when somebody's possessed by his spirit and then they write a bunch of stuff without knowing what they're writing? Yes. Soon. Soon, you're doing it to me again. It's happening again. What do you mean, yes? That stuff's a load of bull. Oof. Oof. June does not seem to uh, take a liking to the way Junpei phrased that. Okay, let's say, hypothetically, that automatic writing isn't a total load. These guys still couldn't have predicted the sinking of the Titanic. Right, 
When this dead dude wrote his thing, nobody had died on the Titanic yet. Basically, Jim is making the argument, if there was some spirit from the Titanic that would have possessed him, in or, or like the only way that automatic writing would play a role in predicting the Titanic's sinking would be if there were a spirit who were on the Titanic, or I guess relevant to the Titanic that had died and could possess the author to get them to write about it, but you can't really do that chronologically speaking, right? So if automatic writing is about being possessed by dead people, who the heck possessed him so he could write that stuff? That's not it. What's not it? Stead wasn't possessed by a spirit. He was doing the possessing. What? What? <laughs> what are you smoking? William Thomas Stead was a passenger on the Titanic. He just wrote down what he saw with his own eyes. 20 years before it happened. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, the way she presented it is like, oh, there are these two like books written by, you know, Thomas Stead. But obviously she meant written by the spirit of Thomas Stead from the Titanic sinking, you know, written through automatic writing in the past. But we assumed, because we didn't believe in such a thing, that it was just an actual, you know, real person as the author. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... Why don't we talk about this some other time, okay? Oh, but... Come on, let's get back to it. <laughs> oh, poor June. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, like, it should be obvious from how I've talked about everything involving this thus far. What you can't measure, what you can't, I don't know, reliably experience. I, I'm a man of science. I'm a man of reason and logic, and... Should such things in phenomena, you know, be subject to the tools of measure and and float? Uh, it's fine by me, but until they do, I'm I'm a be skeptical, right? <laughs> and to anybody who's seen, you know, my playthroughs of Dong Rampa and everything, this this type of perspective should not be surprising. Regardless, um, June and Junpei are, are adorable as always. You know, the ship is sailing mighty fine. Maybe I should, maybe we should use a different analogy given all this discussion of the Titanic and the fact that we're on a ship right now. But one thing we're gonna want to do is, I mean, we'll take a look at the rusty knife beforehand. I don't expect to find much. And more importantly, we're gonna combine it with the whetstone and hopefully sharpen it up. Maybe I'll use the whetstone to sharpen the knife. The blade of the knife is getting sharper by the second. I should be able to cut something pretty good with this. Yikes, pretty well. My, my grammar senses are tingling. All right, so we've got a nice and uh, sharper knife. Before we leave though, we're gonna wanna inspect everything. Got a lot of cheese in here, what's th this? Hey, there's something behind the cheese. You're right, well, why don't we move some of the cheese? All right guys, time to move it. June and I need to look behind you. What is that? There's a little green bottle back there. Bottle of oil, gotcha. Is um interesting. Is this the lubricant we need? Regardless, there are a number of cheeses lined up on the shelf. This is Gouda cheese, the most famous Dutch cheese. If you don't cut open the casing, it usually won't go bad. So you can store it at room temperature for quite a while. Oh, that's pretty cool. So we can eat this? Most likely. Um, I'm not hungry at all. <laughs> I guess it's hard to get hungry in a situation like this. Yeah, no kidding. There's cheese on this shelf. Sweet. All right, well, uh, I don't see anything particularly interesting about any of the other cheese rolls, so can we move this tarp or whatever? There's milk in here. Oh, milk in an iron barrel. Judging by the rest, it's probably really old. Maybe we shouldn't open it up. I don't think it'd be a pretty sight. <laughs> I agree. Um, what do we have here? It looks like some kind of large tin container. Well, it's empty. What about up here? Oh, no, there are cans lining every shelf in here. Um, okay, I think, for the most part, <laughs> always gotta inspect the light, the life of the pantry. We can probably head out from here now, I would guess. 
The first thing I'm going to do is see if we can use the oil on this and see if it works just on its own. This bolt is rusted in place and it won't budge. Of course, maybe if I put some oil on it... Hey! Just a little bit of oil and... Come on! Come on! Whoa! Yes! Got you! You did it, Junpei-kun! You're so smart! <laughs> oh, June. So, so precious. It's cold in here. What is this place? <laughs> Are you blind? It's a freezer. <laughs> oh. oh, no way. That's way too cold for me. Especially given how little you're wearing. <laughs> I'll freeze solid in seconds. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to pass on this one. I'm gonna leave the rest to you. <laughs> Whoa, it's really cold in here. Hey, you don't need to be in here. <laughs> you had a fever just a little bit ago. You should stay outside. We got this. Junpei trying to act all tough. Tough potential boyfriend. Gotta impress June. No, I'm fine. My fever's gone now. But... Ah. Great. Huh? Nice. No, why did it suddenly close? <clears throat> and refreeze or something? Oh. The knob's frozen. But why? <laughs> Looks like the pipe next to it broke and... Do we have a an escape puzzle within an escape puzzle? Hey, Lotus, you're out there, right? Open the door! Where'd she go? What do you want? What's going on? The door won't open! Try opening it from that side, please. <laughs> oh, fine. If you say so, hold on. And... <laughs> it's no use. It won't even budge. You've got more people in there. You figure it out. Yikes. Well, we've only got so much time. It's obviously a little chilly in here. People don't seem to be too happy about it. <laughs> Darn it. Uh, anyway, let's find a way out. <laughs> if we don't get moving, we're gonna be permanent residents. <laughs> Two heads are better than none. Um, she, she really said three, but... I'm sure we'll figure something out. Yeah, you're right. Let's just take a good look around this room, okay? Right. <laughs> Alright, so we've got to take a look around here. Something worth noting, though, is that in order to get in this room, we only needed the oil, right? Which was very easily found behind the cheese. Which means it's unlikely that we'll need to have gotten whatever was necessary um, from the drawer of the the grill, or um, have to use the plate knowledge in here, in my opinion. But, given how long this episode has already been going, I'm going to say that we're going to try and escape from this refrigerator, this freezer rather, in the next episode. We've got an escape game within an escape game where we got to explore. There's a lot of food in here. I'm sure there's some stuff hidden. There's a safe looking like thing going on over there that we probably got to unlock. Um, maybe find some way to melt the ice or chip away at the ice and hopefully get out of here before we freeze, you know, become a little Junpei Popsicle or something like that. I don't know. Um, but this has been, you know, a fun episode. It's always fun getting to talk with June and see what interesting ideas she has going on at the moment. Also, you know, the Junpei June ship is great. Lotus is impressing my my, or impress, impressing me with her character um, with each episode that goes by, so that's always really cool. And, I don't know. I mean, what's there more to say? I'm enjoying the puzzles. I really appreciate all the numbers 
aspects of this game. I like that they're incorporating something like hexadecimal even <laughs> into uh, into the puzzles. So I'm excited to see how that applies in the future. But yeah, I hope you guys are too. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.